gals, and now we're here from Drake Wing Gaming. And so you know on Twitter, the Gaming Drag today, I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Mice Tease, Sylvia's Path. So y'all, before we jump into it, just want to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome awards like permanent access to our community Discord server, and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. 30... Yeah, looks about right. Okay. Sylvia, you basically talked me into tinkering with my personality, and now you're not going to defend- not, you're Now you're not going to do it- blah, now you're not going to do it yourself? Sure, but we are- we were already in there fixing things. We were already lifting the trunk. The what? Like, you're fixing a car and you open up the trunk. Sylvia, the engine is in the front of a car. Yeah, that's the trunk, right? That's the hood. Oh gosh, I, I didn't know you knew so much about cars. This is a common thing people know. Well, I mean, my dad does run an auto repair shop. I shake my head. Look, that's not important. You have the chance to change things about about you that you're uncomfortable with. This is a big opportunity for you. Yeah, but... I step forward and take her hands. Sylvia, you're really good at this. I don't know how much of it is the tea and how much of it is you, but you've got a gift. You did an amazing job with me last night. I felt so good when I woke up this morning, and I... I just feel like I'm going to be better equipped to handle things going forward. Sylvia looks the most flustered I've ever seen her. Oh, um, you're welcome. Do you really think it'll be that helpful for you? Yeah. I mean, it's a little weird. I wouldn't have thought having a having an independent facet of my personality to pull out when I have trouble would be what I want, but I feel good about it. But it'd be a waste if you don't use this gift to make your own life better. He looks at me with suspicion. Are you just making sure I don't miss any more of my shifts? A lump forms in my throat. Uh, well... Sylvia laughs. I guess I wouldn't blame you. And you're right, I should take advantage of an opportunity like this. Like this, like, an opportunity this unique. And I'm still in snake mode, so I might as well use it. Yeah, sorry about keeping you in snake form instead of letting you nap or something. Oh, um, I don't mind if... Uh, I don't know if I mind at this point. Really? Well, I imagine you might know what I'm talking about. You were the one who took the initiative to turn into a mouse last night, after all. Oh, right. It felt so good in the moment, and when I was there hypnotizing you, it felt so exhilarating. I knew what to say and how to say it and what would help, and I... Well, I don't know if I've ever felt something so rewarding before. I feel like my body was this amazing machine that could do things I'd never imagined. She trails off with a faraway look in her eyes. So... are you gonna try? She looks down and makes sure she isn't forgetting anything. Yes. She brightens up and repeats it confidently. Yeah, let's do it! Oh, nice. Sylvia moves to her hallway. I have to give her plenty of time to get the whole length of her body before I, before I can follow her. She takes her place in front of the three-way dressing mirror between her bedroom and bathroom and makes space for me on her left by curling her tail to the right of her. A legion of Sylvia's flank on flake her on all sides. Each stares directly into her eyes. The effect is likely striking when viewed directly, but I'm off to the side where the impact is lessened. It's more appropriate that way, anyway. There you go. Man, that is some gorgeous artwork. She takes a few deep breaths, her body rising and lowering each time. Her tail grinds into the carpet as she finds a comfortable position. And then, she's silent. Sorry, I'm just a little nervous. That's okay, I was too. Just calm yourself down first. She nods and looks at herself more intently. She draws one last breath through her nose and blinks one last time. Okay. Something switches on inside her, inside her eyes, and that gives them a whole new gravity. It's like she's pulled a plug in a tub and created a vortex. I have to keep my own eyes away from her pupils lest it get sucked back in. I'm going to relax. I'm going to listen to my voice and heed my own advice. I won't second guess myself or be evasive. I'll be honest about my thoughts and desires and insecurities. There's no reason to lie to myself. It's just me and Margaret who I... Her voice contains the first quiver since starting. Who I will trust as much as she trusted me. I don't want to step on the purpose of her saying that, so I wait a moment before responding. Thank you for that. She nods. Anything else might break the trance she's put herself in. My name is Sylvia Drake. I'm 23 years old and live in New Greenshire. I work at Barlow's Books and I'm an amateur mu amateur magician. And I want to improve myself. The last bit of hesitation falls off her shoulders. Then let's do it. One last deep breath. I am looking deep into my eyes. I'm listening to my voice. There's no distractions, no worries, no concerns. Just my eyes. Just my voice. Just us. A ripple of calm seems to flow down the entire length of her body. There's no need for anything around us anymore. No need for this room or apartment or building. These walls and floors aren't needed. They don't need to be here to carry our weight. They're melting away like ice around us. 
As she relaxes, the sides of her tail sag to touch the floor that's receding away in her mind. It's so convincing, I almost believe her as well. It's all melting away. I remember last night and how absolute the tension, the absolute the sensation was. Can you feel it melting away? I can. And keep going. There's nothing else either. Nothing filling the space left behind by their absence. There's nothing behind these walls. Nothing beneath this floor. Nothing above this ceiling. There's just... us. Her arms fall limply at her side. You're doing well, Sylvia. We just have one place left to go. She knows what I mean. I'm now taking us inside my mind, inside my subconscious. There's nowhere to go but within. Nothing to distract from fully entering my thoughts. I'm going deeper. Her face goes slack. Deeper. Her eyelids droop. Deeper. Her body reaches a level of stillness and serenity I've never seen before. The same one Sylvia saw for me last night. Deeper. It feels like she's touched down on the silty bottom of the ocean floor and is encased under miles of dense, silent sea on every side. Are you there now? I am. The sound of her voice seems to be coming from somewhere else, somewhere deeper than her throat. Thank you for bringing me here with you. So, what shall we do first? It's hard to ascertain any thoughts on her blank face, but I can tell she's thinking. Wait, no. I want to get rid of my insecurities about my transition. That's a wonderful idea. Would it be too much to give them a form? No, I can I can do that. She pauses as she gathers them together. I'm holding them now. I, I don't I don't want them anymore. And let's push them away. And make a box and put them inside. Even in her dulled state I can see some anxiety slip away as she does. Okay, I have. Did you put a lid on top? I did. And you said you don't want them anymore? No, I don't. I don't want to even lock them up. I just want them gone. And let's get rid of them. How do you want to do it? I want to, to destroy them, to, to burn them away. And let's do that. A breath just barely deeper than her others tells me of her conviction. The inside of the box is heating up. It's burning like a furnace. It's hotter now, hotter than the sun. Pressure's building inside it. The pressure inside a black hole. The hottest star in the universe is inside the box, crushing them with heat. They're burning beyond cinders, beyond atoms. She pauses. They're gone. Do you want to open up the box? I do. Another pause. They're gone. That's good. You've done well. You don't need to worry about them anymore. You've bested them. They can't touch you because they don't exist anymore. A few blinks are all that show of her emotion. I'm glad. The moment deserves a few seconds of reflection. Is there anything else you want to do while you're here? Yes. I want to make myself more diligent and empathetic. I want to be more confident in my appearance without having to obsess about it. And I want to allow myself to relax and not have to maintain my public persona so much. That sounds like a good idea, Sylvia. But that's a lot of things to change, and we don't know what will happen if we do that. Do you want to make yourself permanently different? I'll make it like putting on a different outfit. I like the way you feel different when you dress up for work or put pajamas on before bed on for bed. When I feel the need to act a certain way, I'll put on those clothes. I should have known you'd find a way to make this about clothes. How will you change into that outfit? Her brain calculates for a moment. When I say the words honey peach, I'll put on those clothes. When I say the word spicy apple, I'll return to how I am now. I'll be like I always ha I'll be like I've always been, except for what I except for what I've already changed. Now, how do you want to go about making those clothes? Do you want to move things around on shelves like you did with me? A blunted shake of her head makes her long, straight hair sway. No, I want to be a I want to make a paradigm. For a second, I wonder if I'm supposed to. <sighs> excuse me. Excuse me. For a second, I wonder what if, if I'm supposed to know what she what that meant. What do you mean? I want to create an ideal that I will base that change on. Whenever I engage in something relating to those concepts, I'll rely on that paradigm. So what form will it take? It will be a person. Someone who embodies those traits I want to have. A twinge in my stomach almost makes me avoid asking the next question. And who will this person be? A familiar feeling must make her hesitate as well. You. She threatens to make me lose my poise, but I manage to hold on. You really think so? Yes. Those were all the things I admired about you. All the things that made me want to be your friend. Well, you know that's just what you... That's just what you see of me. That's true. But even then, the things I saw seemed like all the things I wished I could do. I suppose it's only fair since you saddled me with a persona based off of you. Even underneath her, her hypnosis, she manages a sleepy giggle. As long as you're fine with the idea. I can't deny I feel conflicted. She seems so, so sincere in her desire to emulate me. I give you permission, then. 
So, can you picture me in your mind? I can. I'm standing in front of- I'm standing right in front of you? You are. Then let me help you. Tell me the things you want to emulate. When I'm working for myself at my job, in my home, or in my hobbies, I want to be diligent like you. Very good. What else? When I'm interacting with people, I want to be kind and empathetic like you. It's hard not to, con to not contradict her with my own perceptions of my personality, but I don't want to betray her thought, her efforts. Go on. I need to remember things or apply my mental abilities. I want to be adept at it like you. When I'm out in public, I want to be like you and be able to quietly confide in my presentation without needing to be ostentatious. Anything else? And I want to be able to just be quiet, to let myself exist peacefully without performing or projecting myself, to be still like you. It sounds like a wonderful set of ideals. So, what will you do with me in there? I rely on you. I'll model my behavior on you and I'll and look to your example when I need to, when I need help. When I don't know what to do, I'll ask you. Thank you for entrusting me like that. I hope, to, I hope the me inside your head is up to the task. It sounds like we might be done in here. Would you like to come back? Let me change into that outfit first to get me started. She stands there for a moment to be sure. In my mind, she's like someone moving out of their apartment. Someone who is soaking in the ambience before leaving a space for the final time. Honey Peach. The shift is small enough that I suspect I'm imagining it. I'm ready to I'm ready to head back. And you know the way. She breathes out once again to begin her journey back. I'm leaving my subconscious, growing larger and farther away. It's receding back, far, far in the distance. I'm coming back. Sylvia hovers there, subtly swaying back and forth as focus pours into her eyes with every blink. Back. Strength and tension return to her muscles. Back. Warmth fills her face. Back. Invisible gauge fills, and Sylvia shakes her head. It's like she's awoken from nodding off. Back. For a moment, I watch her silently, concerned that I could do anything to that I could do anything to spoil the conditioning Sylvia has worked so hard on constructing. She scans the mirrors before finding my eyes and smiling. Oh, um, I think I might be done. She shuts her eyes and beams in a soft expression of serenity. How do you feel? Um, pretty good, I think. Very well, quiet. Really? Yeah, I feel very content. She sighs and every muscle in her body relaxes. Her shoulders fall as if released from a marionette's string. Lower and lower she sinks until her hips almost reach the ground. With the peep she starts and rises back up to full height. Oh gosh, I forgot I was still a snake there for a second. <laughs> Do you not notice your snake body is as much like this? Sylvia shakes her head and stretches her back in a motion that ripples down the full length of her body. Hmm, I don't think so. It just feels more mundane, I guess. Or, I mean, it's still exciting in a way and definitely new, and I still need to figure out stuff about how it works and what I can do. But it feels like I can exist like this and be calm or active or whatever. Like, maybe I could read a book or call my parents or maybe clean some stuff like, oh, I could maybe get a, get up real hot, get up real high right now and dust on, dust on the top of things. Usually I have to get a stepladder for that kind of thing and... Ugh. Excuse me. Oh, sorry about that, y'all. Sylvia, you're rambling. Oh, s sorry. She sinks a little deeper into her coils and twists her hands together. Do you want to keep the conditioning in place then? Oh, yeah, I took all the effort to try it out, so I should take advantage of it. I've got the whole day to myself, after all, and I just remembered I have a lot of errands I should probably get to. Or, you know, sometimes it's an errand that you know, it's an errand you could do now or maybe later so it's not overdue or anything, but it's probably better to do it now because who knows what might pop up later to... This time, a single smirk is enough to quiet her. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. And check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to silver tier patrons, Cade Silvermoon. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Armor. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to our ultimate tier anyway. If you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to not safe for more content as little as $5. Alrighty. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.